In 1865, Congress ratified the 13th Amendment, making slavery illegal in the United States. And in 1868, the addition of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution guaranteed citizenship to African Americans. But these amendments could not prevent rampant racism and unequal treatment under the law for blacks during the next 90 years. In 1955, a whole community rose up together to boycott segregated buses in Montgomery, Alabama. Their patience, nonviolence, and perseverance started a revolution that would invigorate the civil rights movement. The Montgomery bus boycott moved the nation to react and turn its attention toward the civil rights cause. Several other civil rights events in the mid 1950s set the stage for the Montgomery bus boycott. In 1954, the Brown v. Board of Education case argued the same idea about separate versus equal. In the Brown v. Board of Education case, the lawyers proved that separate could never be equal. On May 17, 1954, the Supreme Court ruled segregated schools unconstitutional. Overturning Plessy v. Ferguson, the case that established the policy of separate but equal in public facilities. The following summer, the high-profile case of murdered black teenager Emmett Till also triggered reactions of concern and outrage throughout the United States. Montgomery, Alabama, was a typical Southern city in 1955. Its public water fountains, restrooms. Trains and restaurants were all segregated. So were its buses. Although 75% of the bus passengers in Montgomery were black, Montgomery maintained a rigid pattern of bus segregation. Sometimes bus drivers refused to make change for blacks and called them insulting names. To overturn this Jim Crow way of life, blacks needed a cause to unite the whole community around one action in which everyone could participate. Circumstances that had been building for months increased the need for the black community to take action. In the early 1950s, Jo Ann Robinson, president of the Women's Political Council, made the core cause of the council the improvement of the treatment of blacks on city buses. Blacks faced many restrictions on city buses, and a few women, such as Claudette Colvin and Irene Morgan, had been arrested for refusing to give up their seats for whites. Motivated by those women's actions, on December 1, 1955, Rosa Parks ignited the Montgomery bus boycott. The law stated that blacks had to sit at the rear of the bus. They had to give up their seats to whites, and they couldn't sit next to or across from white passengers. Rosa Parks, secretary of the NAACP, didn't move from her seat when the bus driver ordered her to. He called the police, and she was arrested. She was quickly bailed out by Edie Nixon, past president of the Montgomery branch of the NAACP, and Reverend Robert Gretz, a longtime white supporter of their cause. Later, Parks appeared in court and was found guilty for disobeying segregation laws. Nixon saw that she would be the perfect person for boycotters to rally around because Parks was a person with exceptional dignity and strength, possessing the quiet confidence needed to challenge the white establishment. Nixon persuaded Parks to allow her arrest to be used as the basis of a lawsuit that would challenge bus segregation. Nixon and the Women's Political Council organized a one-day boycott for December 5th to challenge Montgomery's bus segregation laws. The leaders of the black community hoped that the boycott would show the city that blacks deserve better treatment. On December 5th, 1955, Nixon and his followers waited for the buses and were overjoyed to see that the black community worked together to avoid riding the buses. After the successful one-day boycott, the boycott leaders requested three changes. They wanted drivers to display more courtesy toward colored riders, seating to be arranged on a first-come, first-served basis, and colored bus drivers to be hired on buses running into areas heavily populated by blacks. Those in authority reacted negatively to their demands. The one-day boycott encouraged the leaders of the movement to organize a bolder plan. The NAACP was already under attack in state courts, 
so black leaders suggested a new organization called the Montgomery Improvement Association to lead a longer boycott. They decided that Martin Luther King Jr., the young pastor of Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, would be the leader of this nonviolent revolution. The black community organized carpools, walked to work, rode bikes, and a few people even rode mules. Black taxi drivers reduced fares to boycotters. Mass meetings filled with singing and praying kept up spirits and morale. Though Montgomery's black community held firm to keep the boycott going, the reactions of the whites to halt the protest were equally strong. Carpool drivers were ticketed for the most minor traffic offenses. Blacks who were walking to work were arrested for loitering. A local judge ordered black-owned taxis to stop acting as makeshift buses. King and other leaders were indicted for violating a state anti-boycott statute. When these tactics failed to discourage the boycotters, whites reacted more strongly with violence. Boycott leaders received anonymous calls and threats. King's and Nixon's homes were bombed. The Ku Klux Klan and the White Citizens Council also played a major role in scaring and discouraging the boycotters. The White Citizens Council was formed to fight integration and to terrorize black and white activists. The White Citizens Council was supported by Mayor William A. Gale of Montgomery. He spoke to white women, urging them to stop driving their black maids to work. The leaders of the boycott knew they'd have to stage their revolution on a second front to be ultimately victorious. They decided to file a lawsuit in the district court on behalf of the Montgomery Improvement Association, claiming segregation on buses as unconstitutional. The lawsuit was filed on behalf of four plaintiffs who had been treated unfairly on city buses. The hearing was held in Montgomery on May 11, 1956, before a three-judge panel. On June 5, 1956, the judges ruled 2 to 1 in favor of the plaintiffs, declaring segregated buses unconstitutional. Mayor Gale appealed the case to the U.S. Supreme Court, and on November 13, 1956, the court upheld the decision of the district court. The 381-day boycott had officially ended, resulting in widespread reform. The black citizens of Montgomery and the whole country could now ride buses as equals with whites. However, some violence continued. A black girl was beaten by five men at a bus stop. Snipers fired at buses. Bombings shattered black neighborhoods. The damage was extensive and the reactions to the Supreme Court ruling were frightening. The Montgomery bus boycott had a revolutionary impact on the city. The boycott squeezed profits out of the bus company and hurt downtown businesses, thus accomplishing the black leaders' goals. White store owners reacted, too, because blacks didn't go downtown to shop in their stores anymore. The Montgomery bus boycott also caused a number of positive short-term impacts. Though it would take more struggling to have desegregated public facilities, a beginning had been made. The boycott served as a model for direct local action, and it showed the importance of having a local base when attempts were made to fight segregation. In addition, it thrust Martin Luther King Jr. into national prominence as a leader of the civil rights movement. In the long run, blacks learned that their unity created strength, and that their purchasing power was important to the economy of their cities. Whites learned to respect that economic power and to treat it carefully, Secondly, the blacks in Montgomery won a battle not only over a social system but over their own fear of facing white power. Its success furthered the cause of nonviolence and social confrontation and focused national and world attention on civil rights. Also, because of this protest, the leaders of the boycott went on to organize other major events in the civil rights movement. Most crucially, the boycott showed the importance of the black community standing together. The Montgomery bus boycott truly started a social revolution and moved the civil rights movement forward. It stirred the nation's reactions and turned its eyes toward the civil rights cause. Over the next few years, this strategy would be effectively used by the Freedom Riders, the protest in Birmingham, Alabama, and to carry out the lunch counter sit-ins. For some, it meant freedom in later years. For others, it would be their children who would experience freedom from segregation. The Montgomery bus boycott sparked a reform movement that resulted in revolutionary changes for all African Americans.